Welcome to the SWEO Services Matrix session. Um, and this session is about an introduction to adult ed bridge programs and ICAPS. Um, so we thank you for spending the afternoon with us to learn a little bit more about how um, bridge programs and ICAPS work. Uh, we are joined today by Angela Gerberdine from um, the Illinois Community College Board, and she's the Director of Work-Based Learning. So before I hand it off to her, just a couple of housekeeping items. So my name is Kirsten Bayer, and I'm with the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University. Um, I am the tech support for today's session, so feel free to reach out to me if you need anything or have any questions regarding follow-up. Um, today's session will be recorded, um, and so you will have access to that recording on LNI WorkNets on our WEO Services Matrix uh, website. I can put that link in the uh, chat here in a second. Um, and then we will also put that um, in a follow-up email tomorrow to you. Um, so you'll have the recording and the presentation slides. The slides were actually sent out earlier today. So if you did not receive those, make sure to check your email. It would have came from my email, um, which is kmbayer at ilstu.edu. Um, so feel free to uh, check that out. Um, and then one second here, sorry. Apologize everybody for that. Um, and I believe that's it for housekeeping items. Um, again, I'm here as well as Laura Dahl. I'm joined by her um, from the OET team and Mark Burgess's team. So we will be here for chat and Q&A at the end of the session. And then I'm gonna hand it off to you, Angela, to get us started. Hello all, hopefully you've had a decent lunch and you're not gonna fall asleep on me right after lunch as typically happens on a weekday afternoon when it's kind of dreary outside and we've all just had a big full lunch, but hopefully this will keep um, everyone uh, awake and interested. Um, so I, as Kirsten said, I'm with the Illinois Community College Board and Laura Dom reached out to me and said, hey, can you um, do a presentation that explains what bridges and the ICAPs and the adult ed world looks like and how we uh, can partner with them, you know, Title I and Title II and some different parts and pieces. So that's what I'm going to spend some time this afternoon kind of walking you through. Um, there may be some duplication. Um, but as we all know, sometimes hearing it a couple of times sometimes make it makes it stick in brains a little better than just hearing it once in passing and moving on. Uh, and since I'm not sure where all of you fall on your understanding of this, I've kind of started at the bottom and I'm going to work my way up from there. Um, so first in the chat, because I don't have a fancy dancy little poll thing that I'm going to pull up for you guys, but in the chat, how would you rate your knowledge? Of where of ICAPs and bridge programs. So if you're a one, yeah, don't know very much about it. Number two, you've heard a little bit. Three, you're pretty good with them. And four, you could write a book on them. So I'll give you all a minute to kind of plug in some numbers so I can see where we are. Got lots of twos. Lucas is at a seven, so he's way beyond books. He's he's on to the uh, instruction world, ones and twos. Okay, good. So we're in the, I'm in the right place and I've got the right information to share with you guys. That's that's helpful and good to know. Um, and hopefully by the end, you can move up a level or two and, and you may not be at the seven yet, but hopefully we can get you a lot closer to understanding uh, what these look like. So, how are we going to spend some time this afternoon? We're going to, I'm going to do an overview of what, what bridge programs are, an overview of ICAPS programs, give you some examples of some programs, and then we'll have some time for some questions and answers if you've got them. Um, again, keep in mind, I have, I mean, I understand we owe in Title II on a very dangerous level, meaning I could get into some serious trouble with it. Um, I have a lot more background in adult education. And while I'm the director of work-based learning, I actually fall within the workforce development division at ICCB. So there's some things of adult ed that I'm very clear on, and there's other pieces that I go, yeah, I'm going to have to talk to a counterpart and see who that 
see what that answer is. So um, just putting that preface out there that I, I don't know all, may not have, know all of your answers. I may if you ask me the easy questions. So bridges and ICAPs, how are they similar? How are they different? What does this mean? What are they, I mean, are they, are what, what they're called different things. So we would assume they're different. How is that the case? So bridges tend to be very broad in nature. So think in terms of like a healthcare. So that could be um, lots of job opportunities within healthcare, within IT, within manufacturing or hospitality. ICAPs are more specific and we're gonna to get to ICAPs and I'm gonna tell you what that acronym is in just a minute. But in the state of Illinois, we refer to them as ICAPs as its own word. So um, ICAPs are much more specific. So as an example, in healthcare, you may do phlebotomy or EMT or CNA. In IT, you may do help desk or cybersecurity or Google IT. Um, manufacturing could be a specific ICAPs, might be welding or CNC operator. Hospitality could be culinary. We've got some also that are restaurant managers or are in hospital, um, hospital man uh, not hospital, hotel management. So there's the bridges are more broad based. The ICAPs are more specific for individual programs. So this is where I said, we're gonna do a little bit of explanation. So you may have heard integrated education and training, IET. You may have also, and I've just said ICAPS, is Integrated Career and Academic Preparation System. ICAPS is Illinois' implementation of the national level requirement of an IET. So we started doing ICAPS in Illinois in 2012, 2013, 2014. IETs were officially named at the national level in 2018 or 19. So instead of scrapping everything we'd already done and changing the name, we have kept ICAPs. So if you hear a program or someone talk about an IET in terms of adult education and workforce training, it is the exact same thing as an ICAPS. It's just ICAPS is Illinois' version of it. Um, bridge programs, again, at a lower level, more broad-based level, assist students in obtaining the necessary academic skills, employability skills, and technical skills through, there's three required components of bridge programming, contextualized instruction, career development, support services. We're gonna get into each of those and talk about what are those, what does that mean, what's involved, what does that look like? So let's take a look at some instructional models. Um, so the bridge core elements, like I said, are contextualized instruction, career development, and transition, transition services. So, what does that mean? So bridges incorporate in the contextualization, the industry knowledge. So such as math skills for a particular field. So if you're looking at healthcare, you're gonna to need to know fractions and decimals. You may not need to know as many square roots. Maybe you do, but when you get into welding, you may need to know some of those numbers and how to mix some of the chemicals together to make everything the right welding goes with the right type of thing. So it's the industry knowledge and that's contextualized mean um, using real life information on how to apply it in place. Because if you think back in third grade, we all had to memorize the multiplication tables or you had to multiply fractions and lots of kids go, I'm never gonna use this. What is the point? I hate this. But the contextualization comes with the industry knowledge of, this is how you actually apply those fractions. This is why you need to know the greatest common denominator or the least common factor. You know, all of those terms that we use in math class, this is putting them into, into real life usage. Career expectations. So um, a lot of times within Bridge, they will explore. Okay, so I think I wanna go into healthcare, but I don't really wanna deal with body fluids and blood. Okay, so let's not go CNA, let's not do phlebotomy, but maybe we wanna do something like an, uh, like an imaging technician. So like an EKG technician or something that way. So you're not dealing with the fluids. So they may look up what kind of credentials do they need for those? How long do those credentials take to earn? I mean, are we talking about a six month program? Are we talking about a three year program? How much does that cost? How much time? All of those kinds of pieces. So when they 
get to the point that they're ready to go apply for a job, they've already got some background knowledge as to what's expected for them. And then the third piece of bridges is transition skills. So transition is very broad. It could be into employment. So they're working on resume writing. They're working on interviewing. What do you ask? What questions can you ask? Should you ask? Um, what do you wear to an interview? And a lot of times that will change depending on the job setting. Um, but having those kinds of conversations about what does that look like? But also transition into college, college success. How, you know, maybe it's some study skills. Maybe it's um, looking at a FAFSA form for applying for financial aid, or it's a college application that they take a look at and go, what all do I have to have to apply for college? So just different things that transitions piece is the other part that comes into this because we're not just trying to get them the basic information. Bridges are also supposed to be leading somewhere. So bridges are taught by adult education instructors. And in adult education, there's six levels. And bridges are typically taught in levels three and four of those six levels. So this is all adult education at this point still. So what do we have approved in the state of Illinois? So we have 74 adult ed Title I programs that ICCB funds in the state of Illinois. Out of all of those programs, we have 182 approved bridges. And that's a lot because some programs have two, three, four, five bridges that they wanna offer. Some only have one or two. So these are um, some of the most common ones. There's 54 health science bridges, um, 31 in manufacturing, 25 in information technology. The college and career bridge, you may be wondering what that is. Um, we had programs that came to us and said, we know we wanna have a bridge. The problem is we have two students in healthcare. We have two students in manufacturing. We have two students in education and training. We have two students that wanna do hospitality and tourism. Okay, so that's eight students, but I can't pay four teachers that only have two students each. What can we do? So you, we have allowed them to build a college and career bridge that would put all eight of those students together because they're all needing to work on the employability skills. The resume writing and the interviewing doesn't change a great deal from field to field. The contextualization does, could. So you may have students in there, but maybe if you need fractions in welding and you need fractions in healthcare and you need fractions in hospitality, like in culinary for measuring, the fractions are covered by several groups. So you can put them into one group. They can cover broad topics that everybody needs, but they can also focus on their individual smaller areas to figure out what do I need to do? Where do I need to go next? What are my next steps? And that pays one teacher to cover eight students instead of four teachers covering two students each. And fiscally, the four to two doesn't make a lot of sense. So we have bridges that's, so then we also have transportation, distribution, and logistics, education and training. Most of those are, are gearing towards early childhood or something along those lines. Um, again, these are bridges are more broad, so they're going to be in the, these broader pathway areas. Um, business management and administration, entrepreneurism is something we've started in the last year or two. A lot of times our ESL learners have businesses from their home country that they want to do here. Could be jewelry making, could be welding, could be a child care at, out of their house. So they want to start their own business, but how do they do that? What are those requirements? in the US for running your own business. What do you have to do? What does that look like? So that's one of the newer ones that we've had. Uh, law and public safety, again, leading it towards corrections or um, criminal justice, security guards, a couple of different directions those could go into. So bridges, like I said, bridges need to lead somewhere. So bridges can lead to ICAPs or they can lead, and ICAPs often lead to employment and or post-secondary education. A bridge leading nowhere is basically a cliff. <laughs> and we don't want our students to get up all the way up to the edge, go across the bridge and then fall off the cliff. So we want them to be prepared to move on to whatever that next step is, whether it's employment or it's post-secondary education. 
the ICAPs or something else. So ICAPs is Illinois' implementation of IETs. And, and I mentioned this earlier. So remember ICAPS stands for the Integrated Career and Academic Preparation System, which is the state level name versus IET, which is Integrated Education and Training, which is the federal name. Um, and again, they are the same things. They just, they have different names. So the core elements in an ICAPS, those are adult education and literacy activities, workforce preparation activities and workforce training. And I'm gonna go into detail more about how these are different because a lot of people at first glance go, well, what isn't workforce preparation, workforce training, the same thing. They're related, but they are not the same. So let me dig into some of how these are similar. So in adult education and literacy activities, all eight of these boxes fall within the adult education and literacy, which is title two. Sorry, I had to think about that for a minute. So it could be general ed adult education classes, could be literacy classes, could be workplace adult ed activities, family literacy activities, English language acquisition, um, IELCE, workplace prep activities we talked about in integrated education and training. Those bottom two all fit into the bigger picture. Most of our programs, when they when we ask them what adult activity, adult education activities are you doing, they tell us it's either um, ASE high school equivalency courses or it's English as a second language courses. So that's where most of them fall. Now, in the workforce preparation activities, what do these look like? Well, these are utilizing resources, using information, working with others, understanding systems, transitioning skills, other employability skills. These are those very broad-based skills of what does it look like to get a job in the workforce? So in the last five or 10 years, um, one thing that I have noticed a lot is that students are very reliable on their phones, duh, because that's where we, I mean, that's a lot of us are, but they haven't had the experience of having a job where they're not allowed to be on their phone. They have to put their phone down. And what is a result of not putting their phone down? Those are fit into the workforce preparation activities. Um, what does it look like to keep your job? What does it look like if you're gonna be sick? How do you call your employer and say, hey, I need to take the day off because I'm sick or my child is sick. My tire is flat, I will be there, but I will be late. Again, those aren't field specific, because any one of us can have a sick child, whatever field we're in. Any one of us can have a flat tire, no matter what field we're in. We all may have to call in sick at some point. So these are those very broad-based workforce preparation activities. Could be resume writing, could be interview, mock interview practice. It could be, again, job search of what is, what do I need to do? What's available in my community? What does this look like? Another resource for the workforce preparation activities is the Illinois Essential Employability Skills um, Framework. This is something that was done by the ICSPS team, the Illinois Center for Specialized and Professional Support um, that Kirsten and her colleagues have put together. Um, and while their focus is on personal ethic, work ethic, communication, and teamwork, those all connect to each other, they cross connect, they interconnect, all of those things, again, are some of those it doesn't matter what field you're in, you need to have some work ethic. Are you going to show up every day? Are you going to be on time? Are you going to do what you're being asked to do, obviously within reason? Um, personal ethic, are you going to be honest or do you lie often? Um, communication, do you talk or do you just sit in your office never speaking to anyone and are frustrated because you don't know what's going on? Um, teamwork, most most jobs require some form of teamwork, whether it's small pair work or it's bigger groups and teams, um, but you've got to be able to collaborate and work with each other. So while these skills are not laid out exactly as that previous screen was, there's a lot of similarity between these two screens and what they're doing, which is why Illinois Essential Employability Skills already has this in place. So we have had college, we have referred colleges to take a look at this, to see what could you add? What are you missing? What else is needed? So then the third component is workforce training. And there's actually 11 of these. So stay with me and I'll get you through all 11 of these. Um, 
occupation skills training. So that includes like non-traditional employment, often by gender. Um, on the job training, could be an apprenticeship, incumbent worker training, um, combined workforce training and related instruction. Sometimes that is with the cooperative education programs, uh, private sector training, skill upgrading and retaining, entrepreneurial training. We mentioned that earlier. Um, transitional jobs, those working um, with WIO Section 13 D5. Um, these are often more of the ones that we see in connection to ICAPS is job readiness training adult education activities, uh, but also customized training. So with a commitment from an employer or group to employ an individual upon completion of training. So they have said, hey, we really need this group of people to be better skilled at X. So we may do an ICAPS with that piece, that skill set as the workforce training piece, along with the preparation activities, along with the adult ed pieces to make sure it all fits into the ICAPS model. Do we have questions at this point? I've got, I mean, I've got lots more. Um, do we have a link? Kirsten, can you find the link to that essential employability skills? Hey, look, somebody's on it, Laura's on it. Thank you very much. See, this is where your teamwork comes in. I'm always talking about on some of these things that the people behind the scenes are way faster at dropping links in the chat than I am. So thank you, Laura. I appreciate your help with that. So the workforce training piece is taught by either a CTE or an industry trainer. So, and, and I say, or, because if you're working with somebody at a community college, it's gonna be the CTE world trainer. If you're working with a regional office of education or high school district or um, a CBO, community-based organization, you may have an industry trainer instead because we have two different models in ICAPS, which we're gonna get into in just a minute. But with the workforce training, that is taught by the expert in the field. That is not an adult ed instructor, that is a CTE industry certified expert that's teaching that. So we're not asking our adult ed instructors to be welding experts. We're asking our adult ed instructors to be adult ed experts let the CT experts be the experts in their field and know what they're doing. How these two people come together sometimes is through what we call a support course. One of the things that we require in ICAPS in Illinois is a separate support course. And that support course is taught by the adult and instructor. Those are typically students at a level five and six out of six levels. As I said, there's six levels in adult ed. So these are higher level students. So for example, in welding, they may be in welding for four hours a week, but they also go to the support class one or two hours a week. In that support course, um, the adult ed instructor is where they're doing those adult ed activities and some of those preparation, workforce preparation activities. So that's where they're gonna work on the fractions for the welding. That's where they're gonna work on the science for the welding. That's where they're gonna work on some of the reading that those welding students may need to do. Um, and they have worked with the CTE instructor to find out what are some of the pain points that that welding instructor sees on a regular semester basis. Everybody struggles with the fractions. Everybody struggles with the percents. Everybody struggles with this one particular test because there's it's so heavy reading based. Okay, let's work on those skills to get these students the support. And I know there's probably some people in listening that are saying, yeah, but that's giving them an extra advantage. It is sort of what it's really doing is giving those students the support that they should need or that they do need because we know with them being high school equivalency students, not high school students, these are adult students that just are lacking a high school diploma or their English as a second language students. They need just need a little bit more support to make sure they're able to get all the way through this. Um, that happens in the support course. So that's where the adult ed teacher comes in, is in the support class. The workforce training piece is the CTE piece, which is their expertise. So how these two work together is what we call team teaching. And in Illinois, it, we say this is a required piece for ICAPS in Illinois, um, but what's involved? So that's where we say the adult ed instructor, the industry training instructor collaborate. So how do they collaborate? 
Um, they can do that in lots of different ways. We say there needs to be at least a 25% overlap of time. And so that could be planning course schedules ahead of time to align the topics. Because we don't want the CTE teacher to be talking about fractions in week two and three where the adult ed instructor doesn't get it till week six or eight. That doesn't help. If you can put the topics either just ahead or in line with, that's better off for everybody involved. Comparing attendance habits of students. Sometimes because the adult ed instructor is more familiar with the students, sometimes the students will reach out to that instructor and say, hey, um, my child's having a medical procedure next week. I'm not gonna be in class next week. I'm just letting you know. The adult ed, the support teacher should say, have you told your CTE instructor this yet? If you have not, send them an email. This is what you say. This is how you do it. And again, that's another job skill. Just like I was talking about before, how do you call in sick? This is the same thing saying, I have a situation that's presented itself. I'm gonna need some time off. What do I do? But comparing attendance habits. So the CTE instructor may not be seeing a student. They can reach out to the adult ed instructor and go, hey, have you heard? Kirsten hasn't been here for a couple of weeks. Do you know what's going on? And I can say, oh, sure. I heard Kirsten's going to be out with one of her children have being sick. I told her to get a hold of you. Let me reach out to her and see how everything's going. So again, checking in, making sure there's points of contact, but also sharing difficult topics in the training course. So there's more support in the adult ed course. It could be co-teaching in a classroom. So it could be that the CTE teacher is in the support course. And we have ICAPs across the state that are set up that way, that both teachers are in the same classroom covering adult ed content and reviewing material just to be um, two sets of hands to make sure it's clear. But we also have to go the other direction where the adult ed instructor is in the CTE classroom, helping, um, could be with another way of instruction, could be um, kind of as a floater, not really like a tutor, but kind of as a floater, just an extra set of hands. But we also have some where they're pretty separate from the classroom physically themselves but they are in contact outside of the classroom, helping make sure the students are as successful as possible. So that's how these all fit together with this team teaching piece. So where do I, we talked about bridges can lead to ICAPs. So where do ICAPs lead? They hopefully lead to employment or additional post-secondary education or training. So maybe they get a welding, they complete the welding ICAPs, but they want to continue on and get a manufacturing or an automotive certificate, or they want to get an industrial maintenance certificate. Those are things that could continue. You may hear the word stackable. These are things that could be stackable or moving forward. But we also know um, that everybody has bills to pay. We have kids to feed, we have car insurance to pay, we need gas to get in the car, put in the car to get to class. So sometimes students just need to step out, work for a while with this new credential that they have from an ICAPS, and then come back and do some more education at a later point. And those are okay because, you know, we've all had those times and we're like, yeah, I got to pay my bills, so I got to go get a job. So I need a different job. So ICAPS can lean to a variety of different places. Okay, I'm not sure why that screen was blank. Um, Kirsten, this is a video that we were trying to figure out either. Um, yes, Laura, thank you for adding that statement. How the, this is through all three of these pieces, through this setup, the CTE course, the support course, everything all collaborating together. That is how the three components offered concurrently and contextually meet that requirement. Um, and there was something I was just gonna add that just jumped right out of my head. But, um, so I would, this link was on this particular slide. I can't make it play so you can hear it. I can listen to it. It's about a three minute video. It's from Parkland College. Um, there's, I think three or four different students in there that talk about why they got into ICAPS, why they started, what their goals were, what they were wanting to learn, um, where they were going, and then what they did gain at the end of it. So if you're interested in hearing from some students about what this looks like and how this worked for them, because sometimes it's, I mean, I can give you all the background on it and all of the do's and don'ts and 
check boxes and all that sort of thing. But sometimes hearing it from the student themselves is is way better. So unfortunately, we don't get to hear that video, but it is a pretty good video. So then the question comes, so bridges, ICAPs, how do these move together? And as we said, bridge programs can lead to ICAPs. So the bridge program is over here on the smaller side. ICAPs, there's model one and model two. I'm going to get into both of these, so don't panic about trying to read all of these right this minute. The bridge program, again, it's got the contextualized criteria, uh, context contextualized adult ed curriculum. It's got career development. It's got transition services. Those are the three required pieces. But in Illinois, we've said they also need technology skills because of the world that we're living in. And the employability skills fit into, we call that out specifically, but it's part of the career development type of things. And we typically say those are reading, re, those, those levels 4.0 to 8.9 are reading levels. So bridges are typically um, slightly lower level than adult ed, than ICAPs. And again, remember they're more broad. ICAPs, we have two models. We have model one and model two. And if you look down through this list, everything on here is exactly the same except for this one bullet right here. This one over here says college credit bearing tech career technical education is the workforce training piece. Over here says non-credit technical workforce training piece. So model one are students that are getting college credit. Model two, students are not earning college credit. And that's because of how they're set up. For example, um, phlebotomy is one of those programs. It's not quite long enough to be a full college program and has all the parts and pieces that are necessary to get it approved as a full program. And so a lot of times phlebotomy programs are offered through a community education class or continuing education. And so that fits into a model too. It may be connected through a college, but they're not actually earning college credit. So that's the difference between a model one and a model two. So when we talk about what this results in, again, high school equivalency, industry recognized credentials on both and employment opportunities are on both. The college credit is model one. They get transferable college credit, hopefully stackable college credentials. These are all hopefully likely all that's the plan is gonna happen. The only one that kind of might shift is if you're working with English as a second language students. The high school equivalency, they may already have that from their home country. They may have bachelor's and master's degrees from their home country. So the ICAPs may not result in a high school equivalency for them, but that's okay. When they turn these in, get them approved, they have to tell us this is for ESL students or this is for high school equivalency student. Where's the focus? So we can tell, okay, yes, these are what these are working their way into. So I know those are kind of small print. So again, model one. There's the adult ed, there's the career development, workforce preparation, transition services, technology, employability, conference and student services, um, the college credit, workforce training, shared learning outcomes, team taught, integrated support class, all of those are pieces that are in model one. With these, and the, again, the orange is the model one. Model two is the same, the same things are included. So even that phlebotomy class, there should be some team teaching between the phlebotomy instructor in community education or corporate training or wherever they're doing it through and the adult ed instructor. Um, there should be some connection there because we wanna have some shared learning outcomes. We want these, these students to be able to succeed. So we're trying to help them make sure they've got all the skills that they need. The career development could be done through adult education it could be done through Title II. Some of those things, you may be able to come in and serve as a mock interview um, uh, interviewer to practice interview questions. It could be done through, if it's at a college, career services that come in and help them put together a resume or those kinds of things. So the workforce preparation, this the second option for both Model 1 and Model 2 has a lot of flexibility in it. So we work with a lot of different people to see how we can make those things happen. Obviously, adult ed has its place. CTE and the workforce training has its part. It's the workforce prep piece that there's some room. So this is a success story, um, not video-based. 
So, you know, technology in 2023 works great until it doesn't, which it did earlier with that video. Um, this is Yami Uvera um, at the College of Lake County. Um, she, she didn't know she would become an auto mechanic when she started. She started out first as an ESL student. Her friends told her about the free classes. She started there. Then she went on to earn her GED uh, because she did not have that from Mexico, from her home country. And then she started, and while getting her GED, she was part of the ICAPS program there in automotive technology. Um, so she started getting some certificates in auto technology. And with some scholarships, she worked herself towards an associate degree. Um, after she got help with her resume and applying for some jobs, she landed a job at a local shop in Mundelein. Um, she's still at CLC, working on her education, um, but she's also getting that firsthand experience working in the field, but she's a woman in a male-dominated field. So, you know, that's where the ICAPs can come in and pay off. They can, it's intended to help accelerate some of the learning. So it's not do all of your adult ed, finish all that, then you start in CT, then you do all that. This is where hopefully those are, there's overlap and partnerships involved um, because there are students that have capabilities to do both at the same time. And so that's where this fits in. Speaking of partnerships, what does that look like? Um, and why should we owe a partners refer um, for this as a training option? So partnerships that adult ed programs are already working with, local businesses, local workforce, innovation boards, education providers, public aid, area planning councils, support service providers, community agencies, youth agencies, community-based organizations. There's all kinds of partnerships on this list. And we owe a partners, workforce, the LWIBs are part of that. Um, and we do that because we're looking to see um, how everybody can come together because we're all looking for the right credit that we need um, to check our boxes, to meet our requirements, to do what we need to do. So why partner? Why be part of this? Why should you continue with this? For the general support of the student. And I don't know if you've heard much, but service integration is a pretty popular uh, topic right now. How can Title I, Title II work together? How does Title III and Title IV come into this? How can we collaborate? Um, how can we braid funds? How can we make these things work together? So just like I said, everybody gets a chance to check the box for the student's benefit. So another resource, uh, oh yeah, at the top, um, this is the ICAPS Illinois webpage. Um, you can see that there's bridge information on here, there's team teacher information, there's transitions academy information. Um, while it's the ICAPS Illinois webpage, um, we have added a, a ton of bridge information onto this. So if you're looking for something, you're working with somebody and, and they say, hey, go take a look at the ICAPS webpage. They may not be wrong, it may be correct, but they're gonna send you to a bridge portion of the ICAPS webpage. Um, this is a site that used to be somewhat limited. We have used it as basically our resource hub the last two or three years that I've been involved. And there are all kinds of option information on this website um, that you, it, and it's a public website. It's, I mean, it's a .com. So anybody can go in and take a look at it. You can pull information from it. You can look at resources. You can refer people to pages. Um, and this work has been done again with the help of Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support, ICSPS, and the Southern Illinois Professional Development Center, which is a professional development arm of adult education. So again, we have the CTE side and the adult ed side working together to make sure everything is, is collaborating smoothly as possible to make sure information is getting out to the field and doing what we need them to do. So I showed you the bridges numbers that are approved in the state of Illinois. What about the ICAPs? So again, we have 144 ICAPs approved across the state of Illinois. These are in those same broad pathways 
because it's way easier to count them that way than it is to tell you how many CNAs, how many phlebotomy, how many dental hygienists, how many um, surgical tech, how many, all the breakdown of all of those. Um, but again, you'll see that most of these numbers align with the bridges because the goal is that the bridges are leading potentially to an ICAPS. They are not obligated to, they're not required to, because it also depends on where a student comes in. If a student comes in at the highest end and the highest level, they don't have to go back to a bridge and work their way through it. If they're at a level appropriate for an ICAPS, they could come in and start writing ICAPS. But if they come in and they're not there yet, they may start at a bridge and then move into an ICAPS. So it's going to depend on the student where they start. And one of the things that we talk about in adult education is lots of on-ramps and off-ramps. Because like I said, we know that sometimes you just have to step out and take a job to pay bills. Um, sometimes somebody in your family gets sick and you have to take care of them. Um, lots of different things happen in life. I mean, a lot of you are dealing with some similar populations. Things happen, life happens, and they've just got to figure out how to keep moving with that. Um, so ICAPS, um, like I, I named several in health science, manufacturing, I've named some, information technology, I've named, transportation, distribution, and logistics. That's a popular one up around Chicago in the 55 I-80 corridor. Um, and they are doing some stuff in supply chain and they're doing in logistics and they're doing truck driver training and lots of different pieces and parts that help all of us get our wonderful Amazon deliveries that we are excited about when we get our doorbell ring in the middle of the day and we go, woohoo, the Amazon package is here. Um, education and training. That's where a lot of our early childhood work is happening. Um, and again, with a teacher shortage, some of the colleges have started reaching out to their early childhood centers and are saying, hey, can we do some ICAPs so our students get some hands-on experience, you get some, some help, maybe not full-time, fully certified help, but some help here and there with whether it's child oversight or it's some of the administrative side, but just some work and, and collaborating and seeing how that can happen. Um, Agriculture Natural Resources. IDOC is one of the adult education programs that is funded by ICCB. They too are required to have an ICAPS. And so they got two approved this past year. One is in construction, one is agriculture and natural resources. And they're doing landscaping related work with their um, individuals and their students that are ICAPS based. And so we, and they're doing that pilot I believe this spring to see how that goes and see what else they can do moving forward. So my point with this list is there's a whole lot of stuff happening all over the state. Now, just because all of these are approved, it doesn't mean that every one of these run every single year. The, all of the programs are obligated to run at least one each year per grant agreements. However, maybe a program has an early childhood and a logistics and a welding. Well, maybe they alternate those three throughout the year. They do one in the fall, one in the spring, and one in the summer. Or because of students that drop or disappear or demand changes in their area, they may say, you know what, we don't need to do the welding one yet. Let's hold off on the welding. Let's do a second supply chain. So they do a supply chain in the fall, supply chain in the spring, and an early childhood in the summer. So the programs get the autonomy to decide what they offer and when they offer it and what that looks like, but they are obligated to run at least one during a fiscal year. So you may be wondering, how am I supposed to find a local adult education provider? I've, I've not talked to any, but maybe you're new. Um, there's been a lot of turnover everywhere across the state. And so you're like, I don't know who, I don't even know who my local person is for this area and that area. Because just like everything else, nobody's boundaries line up exactly. So the LWIB boards don't line up exactly with the community college boundaries, which don't line up with county lines. I mean, there's, there's all these lines and overlap. So how can you find a local adult education provider? Or maybe you're working with one, but you wonder if you have more. So you can check with your um, LWIB list of partners and see who on there is an adult ed partner. 
Um, you should be part of an area planning council so you can see who's on those. But we also um, created the adult education provider locator website a couple of years ago. There's a link to that. When you go into that, you can search by city or zip code, and then it tells you the providers, I think, I'm not sure if you said a mileage distance, but maybe that's like within 25 miles of that zip code or something. Um, and so you can find, uh, when I did one for Springfield, I found three names that came up. So you can reach out. One of them is a community college and two are, one, one is a community college, one is a high school district, and one is a CBO. Reach out to whichever one you want or all three. See, you know, see who you can work with, see what's available, see what, who's doing what and, and who might be interested in working with you. Um, those are just some options of ways you all can find them. Um, so where do you go when you have questions? You get over, at, this webinar ends, you're going back, you're talking to people and you're like, huh, what did she say about that? How does this fit? Where does this go? Wait, I missed something. So where do you go with those questions? With those, if you have bridge and ICAPS framework policy type of questions, that would be me. There's my email, there's my phone number. Keep in mind, I am at that phone number three days a week. So the best way to reach me really is by email. Um, if you're looking for how can Title II and Title I collaborate, what's allowable, what's back and forth, that would be a Kathy Olson Tracy question. She's a senior director of adult education. Um, and so um, there's her email, there's her phone number. She is also at that phone number only three days a week. So I would say email for both of them. And we're to questions, but there's a missing slide. I had another slide in here about, okay. There was a slide in here, I know. Okay, now I have to go back because I went through all the slides. So what happened to my missing slide? I bet. It was a slide about how does this all connect to the service matrix in WIOA. So I'm trying to do this from memory. The bridge programs are standalone adult education programs. So Title II should not be providing any funding for the bridge programs themselves. That would be a referral from the Title II partner over to the adult ed partner. For ICAPS, the ICAPS piece of that, the way that fits in, and I had all of these laid out because Laura sent me the service matrix. I had, I referenced the right things, Laura, and everything, I promise. I don't know where that slide went. Um, title two, is she filling it? Look at that. Yes. What Laura's putting in the chat, that's what you wanna read. For ICAPS programs, it fits in adult ed under the and dislocated workers. Um, and then it also fits somewhat into the youth program. And so what we OWA would be able to potentially help fund would be the training pieces themselves. Not the adult ed piece, not the support piece, but the adult ed, the, and really it's the CTE course or the workforce training piece that is where adult, where we OWA funding could come into place. And there are programs across the state that I know we always already collaborating with programs on that. And there I hear from other programs that we always not collaborating. And that is usually because of policies on the we always side about who can they serve, how can they serve, and what does that look like? So I get that everybody's got their own set of rules that they all have to follow the right things and do everything to make sure all the boxes check right. Um, but that was one reason why Laura wanted me to come in and talk about bridges and ICAPs and what do they look like and how do they fit in and how can you use them? So, questions. I really thought this would take longer, but you may get some time back in your day. I just saw something. Um, if you don't have any questions, I mean, I'm happy to stick around for a little while, but 
Um, I, as Kirsten said earlier, she sent out the PowerPoint. Um, so that's what I've got. Feel free to reach out to either uh, myself or Kathy. There's our information again. And we can try to help you answer questions or if you need us to be on some sort of meeting or a Zoom or whatever, we can do that. Um, there you go. Good, I'm, I'm reading the chat. I'm, my other screen is over there. So when you see me looking over there, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just reading the chat. Um, I'm good. At, I'm glad it was helpful, hopefully informative. Reach out with questions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you reach out with questions that are all WIOA based, I'm probably going to send you back to Laura <laughs> because I just don't know. Like I said before, I know enough to be dangerous and I don't need to get any of you in trouble with your WIOA people. Right. So I'll send you to Mark and Laura. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Angela. And that's exactly what we would like. We would like for you to, if you have any questions, then make sure to utilize that Frequently Asked Questions uh, website out of Illinois WorkNet. And okay. we will try to make sure that we respond to those and put those up on our FAQ link. And if there's anything that is specific to Title II or adult education, then we'll make sure to forward those on to you so that you can respond to those. and. Um, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to go ahead and, and, and do this presentation for us. I know sometimes people were not making the connection between bridge programs and ICAPS programs and how WIOA can uh, fund portions of those in order to um, and work together collaboratively, as you said, with service and through service integration to bring the right fit for the individuals that we serve. So I just want to thank you again. Sure. My pleasure. This is, I mean, this is one of the funner parts of my job. I mean, we all have those pieces that we like to do and that we have to do. <laughs> Presentations is one of the parts that I like. <laughs> all right. All right, well, um, uh, Kristen, I think I haven't seen anything in the chat and I think we could probably go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, um, I did have one question from oh. Rory. Okay. Um, he direct, they directly messaged me. Um, they said, and I might have missed this as well, but this might have been answered already, but for adults and dislocated workers, if the training is funded through an ITA, does it still have to lead to one industry recognized credential? It does. <laughs> <laughs> and would, would, the, would the ICAPS workforce occupational skills training component of the program have to lead to a credential? Yes, and it typically does. Um, uh, the Model 1 is the one that, that leads to the credential and has the CTE courses. So those are the ones that um, would probably be a better fit for WIOA uh, participants if you're co-enrolling. So Laura, let me just clarify one thing you just said. Mm -hmm. We request, I'll put that <laughs> in just word probably, that both model one and model two end with some sort of industry credential. Mm -hmm. So either one of those, whether it's a Google IT, whether it's a medical transcription or a medical translation specialist, I mean, whatever, because we want the students to be able to go on and get a job. And so one of the questions that comes up is, does the CNA not a CNA, does a CPR certification count as an industry credential? And my answer to that is, well, sort of, <laughs> because a CNA is a credential, it is a certification, but a CNA, uh, I keep confusing all of my letters. We live in alphabet land and I get them all mixed together. A CPR is a certification and it does, it is a credential, but it's not enough to get you a job by itself. The CNA is what's really going to get you that job or an EMT certification. That's what's going to get you the job. I can show up with a CPR certification. That does not mean a nursing home wants me to be their CNA because I can tell you they do not. Mm -hmm. So it may be one of those things that they, a credential they earn along the way, but it's not a standalone by itself job obtaining credential. Correct. 
Correct. And yes, and we use the term career pathways a lot. I mean, that's your career pathways. You have to get that. And, and um, WIOA can pay for, for those as well um, as a as a individualized career service. So because it's a pathway in getting into secondary, post-secondary education. So. so um Ori, your question in the chat, if they haven't approved ICAPs from me, there's an industry credential uh, attached to it somewhere. So if they're telling you they haven't approved ICAPs from ICCB and that's me, I do those. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is an industry credential. And then I also had somebody directly message me and ask for the slide deck. Um, and it was emailed out earlier today, earlier this morning. Um, but I did just put it in the chat again one more time for everybody. And um, again, you'll be able to find the recording and the presentation slides from today on the um, WIOA Services Matrix um, website, which is on Illinois WorkNet. Okay. All right, I think we're all good to close out. I don't see any other questions unless either one of you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and have a great rest of your Tuesday afternoon. Thank you for the thank opportunity. You. Mm -hmm.